hello, hello, hello. <laughs> What's, What's up, guys? guys? <laughs> How you guys How doing? How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. Hanging doing in there. Great. Doing great. Yeah. Brett. Trying to, trying to get that energy Monday. up. <laughs> Monday, baby. Let's go. I guess Monday. smack yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you already did that in the pre-show. <laughs> Shh. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right folks well welcome to the show to our viewers uh today is going to be a, a unique uh show we're obviously taking you from literally the beginning uh we did one prior and then that was our test run and we found out where you folks were really were looking for so we're going to take you literally from start to finish and, and there's going to be several uh shows uh to get you to master uh the fusion 360 uh, but we're going to start from the, the bare minimum, the basics. We're going to show you how to do the, the, the UI, the interface, and the whole nine and take you through every step by step. And we also have a couple little things that we got uh, going on today. I'm also going to be teaching you a tips and tricks moment, tips and tricks segment, uh, a quick, easy way to uh, a, uh, 3D model something pretty fast. Uh, but I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet. So with that <laughs> said, uh, we got something going on, something new that we're going to add to this show that uh, our buddy. A little tradition. little tradition, tradition that, in fact, Brett Tinius uh, yeah. came up with. And uh, he's. I'm going to let him talk about Wait, let me see this way. There. I'm no, going to let over, him talk here. about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brett, tell, them, tell the folks what we got. Yeah, so we uh, decided to do the Attack of the Pickleback, which uh, Pickleback is the whiskey of your choice with uh, an accoutrement of uh, your favorite pickle uh, juice. So it really cuts the uh, um, the whiskey down. So I think we just Let's get right into it. Can't wait to try but, it. Listen, yeah. but before we do that, I folks, I didn't believe him. I, initially, I was like, no way, dude. <laughs> whiskey and pickle juice? I was yep. like, okay, I'm gonna try, and I did, and yeah, it worked. Yeah. You know how whiskey's pretty rough, but the 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 the, the chasing of the pickle juice right behind it neutralizes right it, yeah. and it was very very smooth to drink the whiskey. I really loved it. So, Soon as but, you guys stop slapping your jaws, I want to try it. Here we are. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we tried it, yeah. All right, all right, that's right, that's right. All right, here we go. All right, this is so, to our our viewers, right? Yep, to our viewers, and we have a little saying. We uh, we say down the hatch to our toes. Hope it doesn't come out our nose. It's your nose, go, boys. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> so smooth. Whoo! Holy crap! That's good pickle. It's right? gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I love it. May I have another? <laughs> yeah. Dave, so, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem with you, bro. <laughs> there it is. Nothing yeah. like learning fusion and drink a few, right? Wash it down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the only way to do fusion. Hey, hey, Brett, are we, are we going to have them see who can come up with? Are we, are we still doing that? Yes, you can design yeah. it. All right, go for it. If yeah, if you have a design out there, uh, we were thinking about putting something out there. But let's put it out to our viewers. If you guys have an inspiration for uh, the attack of the pickleback, we're thinking movie poster or, or some sort of monster with pickles on its back or a pickle itself. Um, you know, just throw your ideas out there, and either we'll get it made, or if you can make it and send it in, that would be awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So design it for us. The attack of the pickleback. Uh, so think of a pick on whatever it's going to be yeah. doing. <laughs> I so want to see every, everything. Yeah. That's going to be cool. You know, who, who, who'd be amazing at that too? Uh, sketchy guy. Oh, sketchy guy. Sketchy yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, he, is he on, by the way, who do we got on? Who's, yeah. who's on? Who's here? Uh, so what far. We got, we so got far. uh, Mr. Flex. He's looking for uh, uh, a contest <laughs> again. Uh, Wolfmaster82, wow. the madman, Broken Tusk Garage, uh, Mode 4. I think that's Jake, right? Mode 4 is Jake Torson. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Anybody else out there? Yeah, he has a cool intro now. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I didn't get to see it yet. I didn't get to. He posted something out. Hey, guys, today. real quick today, I got, to, I don't know if you guys got to see the video yet with uh, Broken Tusk Garage. He did the entry. We're going to talk about that later on at the end of the show with the FabWorks Challenge. Oh. If you get a chance, check out his video. 
uh, that he did of his entry. Really good stuff. Really good. No, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna love it. I need to check it out, man. Awesome, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm looking right. forward to see a lot of those. All yeah. right, it's so crazy. let's get into it. I think this is uh, uh, folks who have been want to stop hearing us chatting and want to get to the Fusion 360 Some learning how to three uh, 3D model. So again, this is a complete beginner's course uh, right off the back. So you're going to learn the, the interface, the UI, uh, and then we'll take you little by little. But stay with us towards the end. we got a lot of good stuff coming up, and we also have a segment again uh, with tips and tricks that will get you going. Uh, kind of like a, a quick, what would you say? That, um, what do you say? A quick, hack? Like, not a really <laughs> hack, but it's, it's, it, it's instant gratification. There you go. <laughs> 3D there modeling. Go. Uh, that's yeah. the way I'm going to put it. Instant gratification 3D modeling. It, once I, you learn this little in your trick. face learning that's right yeah. so <laughs> brett man all yours brother all right. dang it cool let's uh minify ourselves all right here we go <laughs> awesome so when you open up fusion 360 this is what you're going to see for the most part i tried to make mine uh kind of more default than we did on our first show um you know this is a basic grid showing kind of a the plane that they suggest you work on for the most part, but we're not even going to jump into that yet. Um, the biggest thing is you'd start off in design mode and that's this little button up here. Design mode is where primarily we're going to be staying. There is a, a lot of options here. Don't get overwhelmed by them. We're just going to stay in this design space. Um, <clears throat> and mostly Everything you select here will change out your loadout on top. This is your toolbar. And then these are the our toolbar sections. So it'll change based on when you click on these different words, it'll change your tools. Don't get overwhelmed by that. Most of these you're not even going to use most of the time unless you're very specific uh, in what you're working on. Um, so toolbar up here and your browser down here. Your browser is anything that's housed in your design space is going to be on this browser section. And you'll learn over time kind of where everything's at um, and what the symbols mean. And we can go over that as well. Um, but for the most part, it's a pretty easy layout. Your, um, down at the bottom is your timeline. And your timeline is everything that you create kind of has a uh, a little icon that shows up that's either editable or you can um, just identify if you've made a chamfer or your sketch or uh, an extrusion, it'll show up on your timeline so, from when you create it. So as you design, uh, anything yep. you put on your design, it yep. is actually being recorded in the bottom and what you're able to do is go back and anywhere in that timeline to edit any of that any part of your design at any time. Yeah. Uh, some designers don't use it. Some people take it off. I yeah, keep it on. Where is this timeline? Where is this? So the time. Ti so you're gonna get a play, uh, rewind. Uh -huh. You can forward it. So it's almost like uh, a recording of everything that you're doing mm -hmm. you while see. you're designing. So you see that, Dave? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was Devil's advocate. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> so, uh, basic tools that we're going to use are sketching and extrude and and everything like that. Yours, yours probably should look like this, but if it doesn't, uh, that's fine. Everything is actually housed under this create tab, this drop down. So, um, if you hover over those, it kind of gives an explanation of what it does, which is great, and then mm -hmm. uh, you can add it to your toolbar up here if you're using that a lot. And, and that's what I, only, I recommend is there's no one way to design. There's no, there, you're gonna find your way and then you're gonna need to um, put those tools in your toolbar and they make that really easy to, with this, this button right here where you can just pin to your toolbar. And shortcuts is something we can go through. It's, it's a right click um, and you can add common use tools to that so you're not having to go all the way up to the top. We're not going to worry about that right now. Um, 
So why don't so, we show? Why don't we show the folks before we get into the how do they save something or how do they start a project? How to even use the the mouse wheel? Yeah, and the, yeah. the mouse because th that's one of the biggest challenges as a beginner. You yeah. kind of lose yourself. So there's different yep. functions within the mouse left click and the mouse wheel, and then how you can pivot and turn the screen around. Can you walk them through that? Yeah. Well, let's go through what um, your origin is in an access. So up here, we're going to turn our origin on. And that's our XYZ plane. And if you're familiar with 3D printing, um, and uh, your Z direction is the direction you build in from the plate up. So if you were to think of this as a 3D printer, that hatched layer, the uh, grid on the bottom is your table. And this access point here going up is your Z height. And yours Zed actually, for you Canadian folk. And Zed for Canadian. <laughs> uh, but if in the um, your orientation actually may be different than mine in default. So a lot of times the the Y will be up, and your X Y plane will be, or uh, your Z will be in a different direction. And you can change that in your preferences uh, over. If you go hover over your um, icon and then hit preferences it brings up a different panel and we can go through setting up that later and also you can look it up on the internet <laughs> so we're not going to go through that but um, if you want to navigate pretty quickly to your front view side view top view you can actually click on this right here and cube. that's just your, this cube it, is your navigation cube and there's a home function that should bring it back to planar view, which is not. <laughs> so we'll do that manually. But you can click on the right face, and it'll put it in what they call a, a normal view, be normal to you, um, perpendicular to the screen. So it's looking at us, uh, looking at your eyeballs. I've and that's kind of that like I the, use that a lot. Yeah, you that use that a time. lot when I'm manipulating. If you want something flat, right? You want an exact flatness, right? Uh, yeah, but, well, well, if if you make a mistake on this and you move this wrong, uh, you can move it around with the mouse. And we're going to teach you guys how to move your mouse around. But you, there's a little icon next to that cube that looks a little like a little house. A little home. Little, little house. Little, yeah. That's a little house. And you hit that, and it takes you home right to its original viewing uh, position uh, when you first start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and for some reason, mine is super blown out right now, and I'm not sure what's going on with it i'm Whoa. flying it i'm just flying went even further directly <laughs> into it so i'm not sure it must be the grid function do you want me to um, you want me to do you want to throw my screen up and, and so like i'll just start are you, it. Are you I'll good start a new one okay yeah so um that's just the basic functionality if you can't move around there's another thing too where you can uh hit fit in view and that's a right click and then you can go you can get to all your um pan, zoom, orbit, and we'll go through those. So uh, if it have, if so let's see if it zooms in. Okay, good. <laughs> it's not zooming. I'm, I'm pretty, anymore. I'm pretty sure there's one thing too, where you could double tap your middle mouse button and it'll bring up your, your thing, right? It'll kind of fit it all in the screen. Yeah. Right? It'll do a fit if you double tap your middle mouse. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, your middle mouse scroll button, which we say middle mouse, but it's your scroll wheel that you can click on. Mm -hmm. And not all mouse uh, mice have that. So there's ways around it, but Mises really, to it, pieces. you really need to uh, <laughs> have a three mouse setup, a three button mouse um, to be able to navigate pretty easily. So you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And that's pretty intuitive. And I think most... Most software is kind of like that. If you're if you do slicing or anything like that, um, you're kind of used to it. Your right click does your select. You can also use shift in your middle. If you hold down shift on your keyboard and use your middle mouse button, you can orbit around. And you'll see when I hit shift and start to orbit, it brings up this orbit tool that I can click as well. And it's creating a sphere and it's creating it wherever you you click. So if you want to orbit around, there's no geometry here, but 
if you want to orbit around a, a something else, you can manipulate that so it's off plane. It's you can see that this. It, I don't know. Can you see that circle around that? Let me turn my grid off. Can you guys see that? Yeah. That great. Oh. Well, oh yeah. Now I can. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your orbit circle. The center of that is where that is going to orbit. So just think of it like a planet. You're orbiting around whatever that central location is, and you can change that based on where you click on on your part. Hands up. What do you want? I'm saying got... hi to, to the folks out there. I don't oh. want to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were putting your hands up if you have a question. I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. No, if you hear me you... saying the ooh, ooh thing. Yeah, yeah no. hey, then, then you have a question. Let, let me add that. Let me add now that you said that. Folks, if we're going to, as we get through this, uh, make sure you start notating the questions you want to ask. Um, and be, uh, so if, when you're going to ask a question, if you guys can do us a favor and then put the word hashtag question before your question. So that way, when we get to the Q&A part, we can go back in the chat and then pull those up and then answer all your questions that you have. So again, remember, this is the beginner part of Fusion 360. We're just taking you through the the interface, the UI, how to navigate around Fusion 360. Uh, and then later on, we're going to show you tips and tricks. But again, for your any questions you may have, uh, make sure that you do hashtag question and then put your question right behind it. And then during our Q&A segment, we're going we're gonna to answer those as best as we can. Okay. And if it's important enough, we might do it on the spot. So just yeah. throw it in there, please. Yeah. Please do. So I just threw some geometry in there. You can do that pretty quickly by hitting create. And then these are just solid objects um, that you can create on the fly pretty quickly. Right. Can you do that real game, Matt? Because I'm sure folks that, you know. Yep. Because you're pretty quick at it, but how would we do that? Get rid of that one and start a new one. Okay. So that, yeah, so that folks can uh, see how you did that. So where do they go first? So under create, there is the solid tools here. So uh, you can click on any one of them, and then and then we're gonna pick a plane, and then draw out our object. And this is a TARDIS, so we can create our donut, how big or how small we want. But really, we want to illustrate being able to navigate around an object, um, zooming in, zooming out, you know, analyzing it. That is the biggest thing. Like, if you can make that second nature, then you will be amazing at, um, you know, design work, because that's half the battle is is navigating and manipulating. Right. Uh, and Joe. Yeah, being Sorry. able to get back. <laughs> Being able to, yeah, real that whiskey's yeah. kicking in, bro. Now you have get, get hot here. Get, yeah. I want now that you donut. Have the, the power. You have the power. <laughs> yeah, we can make this look like a donut, and then Dave just starts drooling. Can you make that like a square or something? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so manipulating your parts is big, and and that's uh, where those things are. Hey, this is way too small. I can't see this. I don't know what's going on. Like Dave said, you just click, double click on that middle mouse and it'll reframe it and get you right back to where you were. Because a lot of the frustration comes from not knowing where things are. Right. Yeah. So so I want to bust in here real quick. Please do. Um, Brett's showing you an overview, but man, I just kind of hunt around and peck and play. Yep. And don't worry about it. You just yeah. delete it, save it, whatever. Just hunt around and destroy it. Destroy it. And who cares what happens? Break you can it. always start over again. Yeah. You can always start but, over. And, but yeah, yeah. the way to find out how to use this software is to go in and just play and poke and peck, hover over stuff. It's, yeah. it's nice. All right, they so really now, did a good job with this software. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. But the the so now we got to this. Let's say that they 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 put this uh, model in there, this three D, and this is what they want. Uh, how would they go about now saving it so they can well, go back to it few, later on, or is that yeah, something but, that's coming down the road? Exactly. Before okay. you do anything in Fusion, you want to save your project. Mm -hmm. If you're just playing around and sketching, that's it's not a big deal. But to really get the full power of the software and everything you need to do in it you need to go in and save it and that's just a save icon you know that's the old diskette that we don't use anymore but everyone knows what it is and uh you just hit save and i'll save this under my craft show as 
Dave's dinner. <laughs> Can we put sesame seeds on that? Yeah. <laughs> that would be a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> Not a donut. <laughs> this would be a weird donut. I'm telling you. It's, a, it's an unleavened donut is what this is. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So then your project saved. And that's where we go over to the show data panel up here on this top left. And it has all your projects. This is where everything's housed. This is where all your projects live. And these are all projects here. So I let's go to where I saved it, which is Craft Show. You can see some yeah, familiar and, and items. And if you have there. the hobby version, you you will only be allowed to have ten in there. Yeah. yeah. You won't so. you won't be able to have as many as me. Yeah. Well, which ten is, that are that are editable that you can edit. But you can then just put it as read only, yeah, and then yeah. create another one. Th there is a way, and I could show you if you need, if you can't find it, yeah, uh, or ask any of us, and we could find out for you. So to get rid of that, you just hit the close data panel. <laughs> so you want to use as much real estate as possible when you're designing, so it makes it easy. So that, I mean, that's the really the gist of it is. Going around and playing, like you have these these views here, this multi viewer where you can get top view, side view, uh, you know, right side view, left side view, and your isometric view, your three D view. And where'd you click on that? Show, show that again. And that's down here in viewports. Okay. On the bottom right of your uh, control panel, mm -hmm. and you can turn that on and off. You can synchronize them. You can split them up so that you can manipulate only one, and you can see how your design changes and affects the in every angle do you use that one brett i use it a lot do you i use it a lot yep so uh the multi-view is really important when you're you know doing the assembly work and you want multiple views at the same time to see where something's being manipulated um and then also uh you know using them for what something that you would go into assemblies and then you want to drive joints or interfaces between products. If you're moving something, you can see where it interferes. Okay. Uh, that's later down yeah. the road. Yeah. We'll get into yeah. joints Today. later. Today. <laughs> beginner show, beginner. Beginner, beginner show. Um, but it's like, but I'm going, I'm going to do it. I'm going. Let's do it. We're, <laughs> we're building it. Uh, hey, so what about the, um, I know that you could actually do the, uh, but to move around instead of using shift, there's a button down the bottom where you can click and the, you can the just orbit use your mouse. Here? Yes. Yeah. The orbit button is on the bottom. Sometimes uh, I'm over there and I have my hands in like a, a bowl of greasy peanuts or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. man, I don't want to touch my keyboard. So that's important button right there. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. All your, all your tools are here. So, um, uh, the, the other thing is, is uh, I don't use the grid. I use it because it's a default here and, and there's something you guys are familiar with. You can just turn that off right there at, uh, in your grid um, toolbar, grid and snaps. And, and snaps are really important too. Uh, if you're on grid and you do grid snaps, it's going to snap everything to these points that you're defining. So every intersection between these lines. So if you ever find yourself like, hey, why can't I make this organic shape? Go check and see if your snap to grid is on. And that would be affecting it. Yeah, it's uh, a point to point connection. So yeah. if you within a one of those little squares, you have mo multiple little squares. Yeah. And wherever you're clicking in there, that's where that connection is going to be. That's where it's going to stay on that grid. So just keep that in mind as you do designs. Um, yeah. And so if we get into a sketch, that's a good thing to look at too. This is a basic sketch, but you want to make sure you have everything set up and know what this is. And like Dave said, just play with it. You can't break it. You know, you can always revert, revert to default and start a new project. Uh, and the biggest thing is to, to make mistakes and fail fast in it. And, You'll get better. Just don't get overwhelmed. You don't need to know everything right away. It's not a race. You know, you're going to learn it in your own time. You're going to learn it in your own way. But we're going to try to help you understand 
now, what now Brett, if, if they're not going to bring in a, a an existing like you know polygon uh and they want to they want to do a sketch what button do they have to click in order to start a sketch or so get away if we could get get rid of that donut dave's yep. dinner hey, get rid uh, of dave's dinner get rid of dave's can, dinner can i throw in a few questions here real quick yeah that relate uh, to what we're talking about are yeah. we are we in question time just real quick just real quick <laughs> what we got? uh is it better to go straight to uh, Fusion 360 or spend some time on Tinkercad? Tinkercad, I think, is a good beginner thing. It's very easy. But if you want to do uh, really good stuff, I would kind of just hop over to here and, and start learning right here. Yeah. Tinkercad has its places, too. That's where I learned. But if I would have knew this and started... If I would have knew this for free, I probably would have started here. Yeah. Um, I would say the same thing, yeah. Yeah. If you're also, if, if you want to get kids into it, right? Start them with Tinkercad. I would still say, still start them with Fusion. Well, <laughs> I don't know, kids, kids. It, like, you know, elementary school, junior high, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I have a hard guy. time learning. They have a hard time learning the higher concept stuff. That's all right. Sketchy guy says, "Is there a workspace size limit?" No. Um, no. There's a hardware limitation. Right. So how good is your computer? <laughs> how much RAM do you have? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. But for the stuff yeah. that we do as 3D modelers and prop makers and stuff like that. Something you're going to make, yeah. You're, you're not going to have any issues with this software at all. No. Um, you can go yeah. as big as you want or as tiny as you want. Yeah. And, and there is people that use this to build houses or architecture. There's the architecture mm -hmm. side of it. So, you, I mean, that's house scale i mean i have my house modeled here and it chugs but it still does it i mean the whole downstairs is modeled so right with all my spacement stuff on it so <laughs> do you have that on your uh youtube right you can see it what you no. did no okay not yet i need to get better at the youtube thing <laughs> yeah we'll teach you but that's another show all right yeah that's another show sorry sorry no. <laughs> so uh if we jump into sketch and that's where you're going to be the most, let's go through the navigation of that. So if you click on this, create sketch up here, the very top, you always hover over it. If you don't know what it is, it's going to give you a lot of information on how it works. That's going to be where you start. So we're going to click on that. And then it tells you to click on a plane. This is what it's asking for here. It's asking for input from you. We're going to put it. So we're viewing it from the top like it's our 3D print bed or or you know a table we're going to start drafting on. <clears throat> so pay attention to your sketch palette over here. There's line types, construction lines we had talked about before um, on our first show, which you can't find anymore. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of your questions can be asked or you know any problems you're having like snapping and all that stuff can be resolved in this panel um you know a big tip is make sure that your 3d sketch mode unless you want your lines to be outside of the plane that you're working on make sure it's turned off that does create some problems for beginners um, so make sure that that's clicked off um, and then the basic function is your hotkey line or clicking up here to your line tool. And this is where your polyline is going to be creating. Oh, wow. Excuse you're ready. You're ready me. for that. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what is a polyline and line? A line you, is simply a separate line or segment that is not joined to another line. Well, a polyline indicates two or more lines have been joined. Thank you. Nice. There's two ways that folks you can you can do it right the right terminology the one which is called the poly line I call it the line tool I keep it simple because it says yeah. it's a line so and it makes lines so that's what I do uh, so if I say I, I'm using the line tool that's all it is it's it's literally a line that I'm drawing from point to point to point and connecting it until I complete the design and I close it uh, so when when Tinius is referring to a poly line it's the same thing it's the same tool. Yeah, and line there's is a two line ways until you connect it to other lines, and it's a polyline. 
but yep. it is the live tool. So the there's two ways to finish a sketch when you're using a polyline. Um, and that is, well, actually there's three ways. You can complete the design, complete the, um, what they call watertight design. And that's what gave us that blue circle or the, the blue kind of shading inside it. Um, that's telling the software that we are done with that shape. The other way is this green check mark here where I can click on that and that will end it. You'll see that floating wherever you're at is going to be within reach. So you can end that sketch or you can hit escape. Escape is also your best friend in the software. If you don't know why you can't do something or something doesn't move or whatever, you just hit escape. My, my finger is always on escape. And if you use a 3d mouse, there's almost always a dedicated button for ex for escape. Sorry. Is there so, a way to go back? Like two lines? Control uh, Z. Control Z will... Is it? Yep. It's control as easy Z. as that? Wow. Control Z will okay. take that polyline sketch all the way to your basic sketch. And I can go all the way back. And here's, a, here's another tip. You can't use that functionality if you um, close out of the sketch. So you're, it is only while you're in it in that mode that you can use your control Z and control Y will, if you want, bring you back to where you were. Nice. So those are really big. I mean, cut and paste is still control C, control V. All those things are still like anything you'd use in Word kind of works. Those, those hockeys are universal within the software. But if you don't learn anything else today, escape is your best friend when you're inside the software escape and, and then second to that is tab third to that is shift but that's for another show <laughs> so but escape 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 always gets you out of what you're in it changes the mode to a neutral mode and it deactivates anything you're working on so escape is your friend we need to put that on a it's like the holy shnikes button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just spam it. I just hit escape over and over and because it just completely clears everything uh, and, and gets, gets you fresh to a new spot. Yeah, uh, or start start your new sketch or whatever you're working on. <laughs> All right. So a quick recap before we got to go into our commercial break uh, on the UI. Uh, if you can do that, can you go over one more time, really quick? Which is a quick recap, and then we're going to go into a commercial break, and then we're going to come into our Q and A. Um, so hopefully everybody's learned very, very basic. This is a very beginner's course today. Yeah. Simple. Um, so the biggest thing is play with everything. Play with tools. Um, you know, hover over everything, and it gives you a description of it. Um, your middle mouse button is your friend it is the way you're going to move around your model around your sketches um, and the other thing we didn't really talk about too much is when you're locked in a sketch plane you can force it out of the orbit mode so um, normally you can you're spinning around but when you're actually in the sketch you don't necessarily want to be in 3d space at that point because you're looking at it so your middle mouse button, your shift actually will still will, will still turn it around, but for the most part, uh, it locks it in plane if you're moving. So that's important. Your uh, timeline is your best friend here, and we didn't go over it too much, but you can see I created a sketch. It shows up in your timeline. And um, as we get into the browsers and you see the complexity as we start building geometry, It'll start building itself out. We can explain a little bit more about your browser. And yeah, I mean, there's a great self-paced training you can get from Fusion 360. And well, I believe we have a link for that, or do we not have a link for that? Uh, we, we may we not, but we'll, we'll push it out. We'll, we'll push that out. The self-paced training really is something that you can supplement with anything that you learn here. You're just going to go into more detail from Fusion, self-paced, and it is put together really well. It's what I used when I first started, and they just keep getting better over time. There's also uh, 
Fusion 360 for Makers that Bob Clackett does over at I Like to Bake Stuff. Uh, it's a little pricey, but um, if you're going into furniture working or anything like that, he does have some good yeah. tips. Um, I did that one. I I thought it was a pretty good for a beginner, but it was more for like uh, carpentry. Yeah, but but I did yeah. learn a lot. It had some good stuff in it. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I mean, we're gonna kind of weave this more into the the prop building and just kind of taking your ideas from head to hand so you know we're formulating in a way that we think we can bring people up to speed a little quicker and um yeah and make it a little fun it. yeah yeah for sure yeah. <laughs> and remember to always save your project by hitting that little floppy disk yep. up top uh and then late you know naming it and then saving it to a specific folder that so you can go back and work on it uh, yeah. save, save, save. Sometimes, you know, with programs uh, like you know, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, sometimes they freeze, they get stuck and crash out. Power goes it, out. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't, if you're not going, you're, you don't got that habit of saving your, your progress. Uh, you, you may end up losing some of your work because you did it. Hey, so keep that, that in brings mind. up a good question. Is there like an auto save feature? Like yeah, it does. It automatically there is? does. Yes. Yeah, yeah as, and probably like along. 10 minutes or something, right? Yeah, so actually, um, there's if you go into the data panel and you click on to the revisions tab, you mm -hmm. can see when it's saved. So 16 minutes ago, it's saved. And if it crashes, it does a pretty good job of being able to restore it. Um, but you can actually promote different revisions. And so it, it actually does a oh. pretty good job of auto-saving. So if you were to mess up a lot and be like, I need to go back to revision 30, <clears throat> you can actually do it through here and promote that to the um, to the right revision. So it's really powerful. Cool. The other thing, too, is I'm not sure you can do this in the... the you can save... Uh, like, if you know you're going to need to work offline, you can add to offline cache, and it downloads it onto your machine, and you can work on it offline. So yeah. I've done that for clients when I need to work on a plane or something like that. So you do I'll have, have a, a lot of that options. out because I was just uh, exporting. Yeah, no, be able to download it uh, on to an offline cache is really important. So and then the other thing that you can do too with a pro version is share this link and you can collaborate with others um, on the same file, same project, and you'll see their icon over the top. So really, really powerful collaboration tool. Wow. As well. Yeah. We should do piece of software here. Yeah, we should uh, we should do that. We'll collaborate the three of us. We'll be we'll be doing this for uh, the next twenty years. This show. <laughs> yes, yes, we are at the tip of the ice. I mean, it is so it's so. Minute. We're coming at you loud, people. We're coming at you loud. <laughs> all right, so here, all right, folks, we're gonna go in quick into a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with some Q and A. So, uh, with that said. We'll be back here in a few. Yeah, seconds. get your questions in there. Yeah, here we go. Don't you just hate when this happens? Introducing the Can Steiner, the ergonomic non slip grip can handle that can handle your can. Get yours today! Can Steiner cannot promise to resolve any issues associated with truly clumsy people. Can Steiner is a registered trademark sold exclusively on Amazon and CanSteiner.com. Okay, so you folks that don't know, the Ken Steiner <laughs> is actually a design uh, that my buddy over here designed, and it's, uh, it is out to market. Yep. So we're still right saying now. it wrong, though. It's the Ken Steiner. Ken Steiner. Yeah, Ken Steiner. Ken Steiner. <laughs> I know it. Do it now. Drink that yeah. beer with the Ken Steiner. Do it. Yeah. Now, but who's your daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> good grief. Well, that was pretty good. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> now, Brett, you designed this organ. You were telling yeah. us during our, our behind before the behind the scenes, you designed this specifically also for people that have arthritis. Yeah. They, they're able to hold the handle because they can't mm -hmm. grip the can. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's it, pretty cool. We had uh, uh, some bartenders that got it for some of their patrons that have arthritis. So then they keep a, a ordering more. So that's great. That is cool. that is great. All right, See, so that, we're like an equal opportunity uh, show here, right? Everybody's <laughs> got to have a. Everybody's got to be able to drink a cold can of beer. 
That's all right. right. All right. I can't so, deprive anybody. Hey, Dave, uh, do we have any questions out there for from our viewers? Uh, everybody's stiff lip when it comes to the question. I guess Are I should have shaved some of the other ones, but uh, we got one from Sketchy Guy Nevada here. He says, how many times when he started messing around with this did Dave model beer cans? <laughs> <laughs> Too many to count. Yes. The legitimate question. <laughs> that is. That Very is. Illegi illegitimate. <laughs> Ill Ill illegitimate. <laughs> Everything's illegitimate with you. Oh, man. I got rid of it. Now I can't. <laughs> oh, there it is. This is what happens to attack of the pickle back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're still getting set up here. We we got to figure this out. No, we're, we don't have to well, figure it out. You got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. We got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> Mises to pieces. All right, well, let me let me go segue right into the tips and tricks, guys. This is something that you guys will be fine. Really fun to do. Uh, I call It's instant uh, gratification. So, here we go on Fusion 360. Very simple. We went a little bit through the UI. But did you know that you can download an SVG, which is a scalable uh, um, vector design, right, uh, from anywhere? They have a bunch of on, you know, websites and even I think uh, and Etsy. They have some stores that you can down SVG. If you go into the Star Room Builders Group, I have loaded that place up with hundreds of thousands uh, yeah of, of graphics of star wars with logos and you can convert that into an svg and did you know that you can upload it here and extrude it quickly okay so i'm going to show you how to do that again this is a quick and down and dirty way if you want to uh, get something ready and ready to print and, and within minutes okay so what you will do you're going to go up where it says insert right up here. You guys see that? Okay. Click on that and you're going to go down where it says insert SVG. Now I already have an SVG waiting in, in my uh, desktop and it's the actual, the Imperial seal from star Wars. So I'm going to click insert SVG again. It's a, a scale what SVG stands for is scalable vector graphics. Okay. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to pop up this menu right here. And it's going to ask, okay, where is it? Where do you want to insert this design from? So I'll, I'm going to go and says insert from my computer right here on the bottom left hand corner. We're going to click that. And as you can see, here is the Imperial seal. I'm going to click on that. And that is the logo. Now it's going to ask me what plane do I want to put it in? And typically I want to put it on, on the bottom plane. because it leaves it. That's typically where your printing bed is. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select that sketch plane. And it's going to automatically bring in, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see, already done in an SVG format, all right, a scalable vector design, right from the internet. Real easy to do. And then from here, this little thing you see here is to move around. If I hover over this, it's got a little hand, and I can literally grab that, left click, grab that, and move that design anywhere on this plane I want, okay? So I'm going to line it up the best that I can. I guess just learning how to do this. And I'm going to kind of center it right there. Now, once I did that and I inserted that SVG, it automatically went into sketch mode. You guys see this? So it's highlighted in green. It's in sketch mode. I cannot extrude it until I get out of that. All right. So I'm going to teach you. Hmm? You could also do something else, right? By clicking the what on keyboard? Well, yeah, but I'm not going to teach them that. I'm going to teach them. Okay, the, okay, the right. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to teach them yeah. that. We'll get to that those process later on. So I'm going to teach them just the way it is. Now, if I want to scale this, make this imperial seal bigger, okay, write this little thing. It's a half moon right here. If I hover over that little hand icon, is going to show up, and it has two little arrows. And if the, if I move it to the right, it scales it up. If I move it back, it scales it down, makes it smaller. So the choice is mine. Whatever I want to do, I can move it around. I could also use these here to flip it vertically or horizontally. If I click on it, it moves it. Now, you're not going to see any difference because this logo is the same all the way around. Okay. No, I can see it. All right. Somebody messed up with this logo. 
<laughs> it's not symmetrical. Well, listen, I didn't design it. It was the, <laughs> the internet, so don't blame me. Uh, uh, right. Hey, I'm not putting fingers here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Once it's there, and I all I gotta do is I want to click here to finish the sketch. All right. I'm teaching you the 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 easy well, way. Before you do that. Before you do that, the scale, sometimes when you bring it in, if you look on the far right hand side, yeah, it'll be it'll be four hundred inches, like your logo was when I brought it in. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure it's in the right scale. So that's another good tip. Yeah. You can and you can change it all here as well. But I'm keeping it simple for them, okay? Uh, this is just a quick design. Uh, and then you're gonna hit finish sketch. And once you do that, it's gonna turn green. Has everybody see that? It's now it's a solid thing. Now using my mouse wheel. I click it down and I use the shift key, move this this way. All right. And then hold on. Here we go. You see, I get over around it. Remember, if I hit the home key right here, the little box on the top right corner takes you right to there. Now, how do I extrude this? Very simple. There's multiple ways to extruding out of this. This is one design. If you hover your mouse, your, your cursor, over this here, you'll see that it changes. If I click right in here, in between this line right here, it's going to select everything in the interior portion, all of this. Okay, you see how it's highlighted in blue? Yeah. And then all you have to do is hit the letter E, okay? Or you right-click on the mouse wheel and come down to it says extrude. But we're going to keep it simple today. We're going to just... Make sure that's blue. We're going to hit the letter E for extrude. Now it's going to give you, if you look, here's the extrude panel right here. And then it's going to give you this arrow. And all you have to do, and I'm doing it in millimeters, by the way. So keep an eye on this. As I extrude upward, the millimeters here are going to change. Or I can type it in, but I'm going to use the little arrow. As I move up, do you guys see the millimeters changing? Very, very yep. simple. Now, if I wanted to change it, say I wanted to make this Imperial Seal logo to be two millimeters thick, all I have to do, because it's highlighted in blue in here, I can type it, 2.00. That's two millimeters thick right now. Now, if I want to finish this sketch, I can do it as a new component, and we'll get to that later on, but I'm not going to do that now. We're going to keep it as a new body. And I hit OK. And there is my two millimeter extruded Imperial seal logo. Very, very simple to do. And now you Ready. can send, yeah. Um, you can send this to get to your 3d printer. All right. And how would I do that? Again, this, I'm teaching a little bit ahead, but this will help you to start messing around with it. Up in the top, you're going to have solids, surface, mesh, sheet metal, plastic, and utilities. If you click on utilities, okay, you see that your icons here have changed. Here's what you want to click if you want to get your, your design to go to 3D print. Oh. Okay. So you would click on this. But now what happens is um, it's going to ask you where do you want it to go. Now, there's a thing called send, send to 3D print utility. This is if you want... It to send it to get printed through a third party and stuff like that. You can do that, or you could do it yourself, right? Or you send it to your Cura, right? But right now, I just want to save it as an STL file, which then I'm going to take down to my printer, right? And then print it. What I want to do is make sure I select the whole design. So how did I do that? Let me uncheck that real quick. You could either, you go left click on the bottom here in the corner of the, anywhere in the screen you're going to see that hold left click highlight all of this in yellow and it'll select the whole piece okay so the entire 3d model now has been selected and you know that it's been selected it's up here it says one do you see that yep. now where it comes to format you want the stl binary is the form that i use stl binary I have it in my units of, of type or, or measurement is millimeters. And then I want to preview the, the, the mesh that's there. I hit that. Now that gives me how many uh, total numbers of triangles or the mesh that I have to print this, as you can tell. From that point, keep the, the refinement. 
Uh, I typically keep it in medium. I don't change this one. I keep it to the default and then I hit OK. Once I do that, it's going to pop up where I want to send it. So I just label it, uh, name it, and then save it to my desktop. And then you're ready to go to print it. OK? Yeah. Real, real simple. Yeah, you could also right click on the body uh, made for put out there. Right. You can yeah, right click on the browser. There's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, another way that I always use is up in the top left where it says uh, what file export. Right. That's how I do. You can do that too. Yeah. That that's a beauty about this software. It's just so many ways of doing it. How your flow is, how you work. Yeah. You know. So, hey, we do have a question here. All right, go. Uh, what is your favorite model design that you've made? Oh wow! All right, yeah, Brett, you go. It. That's hard. <laughs> Hit it. I, uh, I got one real quick. Oh, go uh, ahead. My detonator, because that's the only thing I yeah. made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. <clears throat> no, no. I, I think the most fulfilling one is probably the control panel. Whatever the project I am I just completed is usually my favorite. But my I'm really proud of the control panel. That was yeah. Really yeah, fun. that's pretty sweet. Ado? Oh, my what gosh. Yeah. I've done plenty. Is it of the things. is it the little fuel barrel that you just did to put SDP on it? Oh, oh my little favorite mini, one. My, my little minis. No, <laughs> no, no. I think my favorite, and I, and I, and I think I'll I'll pull it up real quick here. Uh, let me let me just pull this up real quick. Here, let me close this out so you guys can see what I did. Hold on. Add Abba to the just learning Fusion three hundred and sixty. She's getting okay. into it. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my gosh! I lost you guys. Where did oh, you guys go? Big. You're huh. wait, where did it go? Hold on. There I didn't it is. Do it. I didn't there do it, it is. Oh, okay. I love this one. Yeah. So Made this a little is, arm. Well, this is the from Bach 2 at Galaxy's Edge. Uh they have a uh, uh the sign. If you go to the Droid Depot, uh, you'll see uh the signs hanging down inside Droid Depot, and then these the, the these signs are being held by these little mechanical arms. Oh yeah. So I I took a picture of it. And I said, I gotta, I want to design it because I want to make those signs for my shop. Um, but this illustrates a really good point. If you see my timeline down here, look at all that it took to create yeah. this one design. So it's it's not, you know, it's it's a lot of pieces. And I can, and in fact, I'm, I'll hit play here so you guys can see how it it was all created. So check this out. Yeah, I like this. It's fun. Yeah, so each piece was done, each section, and extruded, and, and the whole nine. Uh, this took this was a long process for sure, uh, but it's so much fun and so rewarding. As you start constructing, you see it come yeah. to life from a two D image. You were uh, definitely having fun with that. One. Oh wow. yeah, to a three D model uh, that you can print and bring to life. This thing, it was it was just it's fun. Uh, you're going to get addicted to this. This is an, an addiction. The other two very. of my of my colleagues can tell you, this is a very addicting uh, software. It's like Photoshop or Illustrator. Once you start it, you can't stop. It's like you keep going. And the more you learn, the more hungry you get for it. And when you start bringing your designs into life, real this real world, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, yeah. So that would be my favorite design. Well, if, it's like Lego. Answer that question. I mean, yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, it's like I, a, I got it's something here. It, it's it's a virtual making. You get to make it before you make it. Yeah, Dave, what you got? I have a, a comment here that probably leads to the next segment. Look at Jake wants to give a super chat to you, but we got to get you the thousand thousand people. I think right to yeah. get you a super chat. Yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad he brought that up because uh, let's let's talk about that, uh, folks. Uh, if you go to the, you, you see that we do two shows. We do obviously FabWorks Live, where we highlight artists and and we bring them to the show. And we talk about their their artwork and how you know what they're doing and so on and so forth. And then we also have FabWorks Fusion, which is our new show. What you see this is to teach folks how to 3D model, right? Uh, so, but on the Fabworks live show, I put out a uh, a gift card uh, from Amazon for a hundred bucks, and my buddy Dave 
uh, said, you know what, I'm going to throw in another hundred bucks. So, you know, from, you know, so Whitey's Wicked Workshop throws in another hundred bucks. That's two hundred dollars worth of Amazon gift cards. So that comes up on July 4th. Okay. At 8 p.m. <laughs> what? <laughs> on July 4th. What did he say? I don't know, man. It was ridiculous. But $200. Oh, $200. Yeah. <laughs> He's slurring his words. No, but on, 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 on July 4th, 2022 at 8 p.m., uh, we're going to do a an exclusive show. It's not going to be anything else on Fabworks Live. It's just for us to give away those $200 uh, Amazon gift cards to two winners. So one winner, we'll, we'll, we'll select them. We'll put them through the, the randomizer on the system, and it'll randomize a winner, and they will get a $100, and then we'll do it a second time, and then that, that person will then get, win also the 100 bucks. So two folks on July 4th will each get a $100 Amazon gift card as a provided, provided that we reach the 1,000 subscribers. So we need your support, your help to get there. We, we need to get FabWorks. If you go, make sure you send, send it to your friends, your family, say, hey, let's support this channel. everybody. Yeah, everybody. Send it to them, say, hey, go like and subscribe to FabWorks, okay? Uh, so that we can bring those numbers up to 1,000 subscribers and, and, and then we can give out these amazing uh, prizes to those folks. So bring everybody in and if you win it, all you prop makers, hey, that's free money for materials that you need. And who wouldn't want to have a hundred right. bucks from you Amazon? Gotta present. You got to be present to win. Yeah, you got to be there so, live with so, us. So take your little hamburger break, come out of the pool for a couple minutes, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, yep. check Stop out the show. Stop eating your Twinkie Wiener sandwich. <laughs> but make sure you have your beer steiner in <laughs> hand in while watching the show. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let, let me let me tell them about the next thing that we got going on. Again, oh, yeah. FabWorks Live, and it's this is a FabWorks challenge, and we put this out back uh, last month. Uh, yes. You still have time. You have between July eighth and and eleventh to turn in your prop. Uh, you have the challenge is you have to design something either from Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities or Savi's Workshop. Now these two places are located at Galaxy's Edge and, and Disney and Animal Kingdom or, you know, and, and Disney Disneyland. Hollywood um, Studio, yeah. Yeah, Hollywood. Oh, sorry, sorry that's right. Hollywood yeah, Studios. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. At Hollywood Studios. And you can uh, design from either one. Now, we have information on this. You can go to the channel, our Facebook uh, uh, channel uh, page or to the YouTube channel on uh, FabWorks. And you click on the video and it'll walk you through everything you need to know, including links. So if you have no clue what the hell is Don, Don, uh, Doc Ondar's <laughs> Den of Antiquities, go to that, click on the link, and it'll walk you through to what it is. If you don't know what Savi's Workshop is, there's a link there provided for you so you can study up on what Savi's Workshop. What's the difference between one and the other? I'll give you the quick rundown. Doc Ondar's. Den of Antiquities, things that they that are found throughout the galaxy. All right, Savi's workshop strictly Jedi or Sith, if you want to go there. All right, all lightsaber stuff. Okay. See, see, Fa uh, ain't no special. He, he's got to like give these little names here and there. I just would have said it makes something Star Warsy. Yeah, and you're in. <laughs> yeah but there, there's also there's links in there uh, our good buddy jamie uh, jamie from outer rim designed it that yeah. you can s send your your stuff your submissions your pictures and your backstory and it'll send it to all the judges now we have some amazing amazing giveaway prizes that are going on folks i'm telling you hundreds of dollars worth of, of prizes that are be going out on that day we're going to have a live judging on July 18th at 8 p.m. with, I think it was like, what, 10 judges already right, right now? 10 judges. So. And yeah. all those 10 judges are some heavy hitter prop makers. These are the folks yeah. that are in, in our industry, in our circle, in our community, that are very well known for what they do. Uh, so you, you won't want to miss out. You can put it together, get it done, and submit it in. Uh, here we go. There are some things out of universe in Doc Ondo's shop, of, isn't there? Yes. Yes, you could do, listen, like Dave said, anything Star Wars. 
there's no limit to what you can design. There's no materials that your restrictions. You can do 3D Just printing. Just something that'll fit. Yeah. yeah. You can design however that'll... you want, whatever it is. Now, only the top 10 are going to make it, right? Because we, you know, obviously, you know, we have hundreds of, of submissions. Not everybody wins. This is not like you, you get a participation ribbon. How many okay. prizes we get, Ada? How many, how many are we giving out so far? Okay. That just give you an example on Kelly uh, from Props and Villainy. Okay. Five Star Wars panels. Just it's, from Props and Villainy. Wow. Five of them. <clears throat> he's a One, maniac. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are panels with lights and sounds and the, and the one that I received today which is right here is Darth Vader it even shoots smoke out of his mouth <laughs> okay it's out of hand wow yeah these are Bro, you know getting crazy yeah these things are not cheap each one goes about two hundred and fifty dollars a piece they're not cheap folks he sent five of them in one is Han Solo the next one is Chewbacca which I love it has fur on it all right has chunks of fur is missing. I ha we have R2-D2, Stormtrooper, and now Vader. Now, first place through fifth place are going to get panels. But oh. it doesn't it doesn't end there. Dave, we have Dave from Whitey Wicked Workshop. What did he send in? Well, you have the Mandalorian detonator. You're going to have one fully assembled that he's made. And then he's also going to give out one of the kits so if you get the kits, you can build it on your own and learn how to put that together. Okay. And he, he gives you everything. Every piece is in that you're going to need to yep. fully assemble the detonator. And it, I should have my video out by then to, to kind of help him along. Yeah. With that Un, kit. Unreal. Um, cool. uh, Brian from the smugglers room, you know, he, he's got the droid thing. He's got good signing in. Uh, James from rebel base. He's sending a, a lightsaber that he's, 3D modeling specifically for Savi's one of a kind. And if anybody knows James from the Rebel Base builds, his 3D model skills are yep. out of this world. Detail. All right. Yeah, very, very detailed. Impressive stuff. Uh listen, you want to talk about new one in, right? Yeah. We gotta, Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yep. Dennis. Dennis from Black Market Outpost. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hand yeah. milled lightsaber. Okay. Yeah. With leather with all the inner workings and sounds and everything in it. This is a custom built fully lathe metal lightsaber. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. This stuff is the, the prices are no joke. We're talking uh, thousands of dollars in prices. Probably. Yeah. yeah. If, if you, yeah. if you, yeah, if you break I'm it down, sure. it's, it's in the thousands. Yeah. So you're, you're going to want to be uh, participate. Number one, because that's the only way you're going to be able to win one of these beautiful props, all right? If you if you land first place, whoo, even second place, man, are you getting a bunch of stuff? Probably okay. everybody's going to be a winner in this one, Ada. Oh, for sure, right? for sure, for sure. Uh, everybody who enters in, but we're also going to give honorable mentions to folks that didn't make the top ten. We're gonna we're gonna display those. We're gonna show those props that came in, but even the the other five of the top ten are still going to get something. So it's not like nobody's everybody's going to walk out empty-handed. We're not, you know. Yeah. But everybody's going to get. Maybe I can an... even give everybody my switches, yeah. my only switches. <laughs> there you go. Rocker switches. Rocker switches. All right. So we got all this fun stuff going on. I'm telling you, it's going to be a blast. Uh, the next thing that we got going on again. It's big. July fourth. Remember, it's for the Amazon gift card, uh, and then the the challenge. If you have any questions, you can hit up either one of us yeah. on our on our channels, our Facebook, Instagram. Hit us up. We all have the information. Yeah, with, with any questions, we'll we'll answer. Whether it be we're, for we're the Amazon people, yeah. <laughs> whether it be for the Amazon gift card, whether it be for the FabWorks challenge, whether it be Fusion three hundred and sixty, or how to make a prop or anything, anything. anything. Hit us up. We're yeah. approachable. That's right. <laughs> all right. We're cool Look. like that. We're cool yeah, like that. we're cool like this. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, you guys learned a little something. Again, we just gave you a little bit of nuggets today on Fusion 360. We didn't want to take you to the extreme and, and learning this. Take your time step by step. And, and you're absolutely right, Dave. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, uh, to FabWorks, to Dave's Whitey Wicked Workshops, to Tenius. He has his stuff up as well. Uh, make sure that you're subscribing to us. Now, 
one thing I want to mention, if you are on my channel, I'm only seeing my chats. And the same thing with Dave. If you're on his channels and you're watching the live stream from there, he's the only one that can see the chats. Uh, and the same with Fertinius. So keep in mind, wherever you're viewing this is where those chats are, can only be seen. I can't see Dave's or Tinius's. So if you're in mine, I can see it. Uh, you that, should be able to. I don't. They won't show up on my chat thing. But that's okay. It'll, it'll show up over there. Oh, yeah. yeah on, on here, yeah. And on, here, st yeah. on StreamYard, yeah. Yeah. On StreamYard, I will. But that's not... why I've been trying to kind of post a lot of it. Right. All right. If you guys uh, remember the challenge that sketchy guy, if you're still on, uh, go back to the beginning of this video if you missed it. Uh, we have a uh, challenge that was put out by Brett uh, and Dave regarding attack of the was it, what was it again? Attack, attack of the pickle, of the pickle back. Attack, attack of the pickle back. We need a design movie for that. Movie poster. Yeah. Yeah. Movie poster. Whatever. Attack yeah. of the pickle back. And, and I, I have to say that we probably sh I don't know should we or shouldn't have super pickle attached to that? or do we want something fresh? We gotta freshen it up. <laughs> we gotta fresh. freshen it up. Yeah, super pickle's been used too much. Yeah. yeah. It's before my time, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Listen, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with us. Hopefully you learned a little something today. But to end the show, hey Dave, did you learn anything today? Shit! <laughs> you broke up. <laughs> you broke up. <laughs> Didn't That's what I'm saying. Shit. You gotta have you gotta have the audio cue. He cut Dave out. No, because he screams it. <laughs> okay, you got to go to the bathroom. We got it. All right, folks. I didn't learn Thanks. shit. <laughs> have a good night, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye guys. Hope you had fun. Peace. <laughs>